If you remember, we're trying some experiments to see if we could make a full-sized wind-up car, looking at various options to see which could be scaled up. The first of this series was just a bit of silliness. A suspended weight provided the stored energy. Obviously, this couldn't be scaled up because the weight and the structure would need to be huge and would end up being completely impractical. So, we need a better way to store the energy. Metal springs are good at that. Compression springs, expansion springs, torsion springs, fat coil springs. They all work. These two are from my toy shop days. Yes, we, we, we had a small toy shop when my lads were younger. It didn't make any money, but it was a lovely thing to do for a while. Anyway, these both have flat strip springs made up as a coil. They are remarkably efficient, but only for small models like this one. Because the problem with all of these is as soon as you start scaling up, you add lots and lots of weight. And I'm sure we could do something interesting with a lorry spring, but just imagine the framework involved. Also, there's another challenge that goes with most of these springs. They move in a linear direction in a line, so if you want to turn wheels around then we need to convert that linear motion to a rotational motion. I was thinking about how to do that and I came up with this thing. In this case we have two compression springs but you can imagine something similar could be made with any of the other sorts too. Wrapping the string around itself shortens its length, pulling the wooden boards together and squashing the springs. Releasing the bobbin releases the energy stored in the springs and we get back the rotational force that we put in. Except the string stretches. It is quite a neat way of going from linear to rotational force though, isn't it? So I may come back to this one sometime. But the string is always going to be a problem in this sort of design because it's not just the stretchiness of it, but the friction involved as the two strands move over each other. Ah, but instead of rotating the string, what about rotating the spring instead? Wouldn't that do the same thing? Now, it's a bit tricky to do that with these little compression springs, but here's a larger expansion spring. If I twist it instead of pulling it, surely the energy would be stored just the same, and if so, wouldn't it be handier for accessing as rotational energy? That's my thinking anyway. So I made up this little experiment. Now, in order to minimize the friction between the coils, I pull them apart a little before beginning. But that means lots of force involved already. So I've included a lazy Susan bearing on one end. This allows the spring to rotate while keeping the friction on the end plates to a minimum. Maybe that's the plan anyway. The frame, even at this modest scale, needs to be fairly robust because we've jumped up um, a lot from the toy springs. Okay, here it goes. It's obvious that there's a limit to the times you can twist a spring like this, but apart from that, it seems like a possible candidate for upscaling. But here's the other problem with coiled springs. The energy is released violently and needs controlling carefully. Even this setup could easily break my finger if I wasn't careful.
So all in all, there are some serious downsides to metal springs on a large scale. But there's another sort of spring, and we'll look at that next time. Stay tuned.